You are listening to DC On Screen. Whew. I don't know. I'm, I'm glad we don't really do openings anymore because I don't have really much in my mind. Mm. Um, <laughs> Just got tired of calling me names a lot. Yeah, I don't know. My my uh, my car broke down randomly yesterday. And, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, we're trying to we're gonna have to figure out what that is. Of course, it always happens like the day before Sunday. Mm-hmm. Like ah, okay, on All the right. Sabbath, if you will. Right. <laughs> so okay. All right. Fine. Take a day. Figure out what the hell's wrong. But uh, yeah, we got some DC on screen news. I one day someone should explain the difference to me and being confined to your home against your will for an entire day mm. and having a perfectly good vehicle and any chance you want to leave and instead choosing to stay at home very much you know with your will the entire day and for some reason those feeling very different mm-hmm. i mean i could walk about 20 yards to my car right now and go but i have no intention to right feels great yeah i i didn't have plans on going any, anywhere today mm-hmm. um i had planned to not go out but now that i can't I am like a caged animal. <laughs> Whereas you could end that in a, now that you can't, even better. No excuses yeah. necessary. Yeah. I've got plenty of stuff to do around the house. I really don't need to go anywhere. Yeah. Because if I went anywhere, all I would be doing is procuring more things to bring back and f- fill the house with. And m- the things I need to do in the house is decluttering. Yeah. yeah. So- <laughs> I mean, help. I have enough. Amazon has. Yet more things coming my way, just just in case I had any, you know, reservations about whether there was enough bullshit going on. Mm-hmm. The only thing I need to leave this house for at this point is more bookshelves. Yeah, I feel that. That's uh, or what bookcases, I was doing. Rather, I should say. I want floor. Apparently, that's the difference. Floor mounted. Mm. So every time I look up bookshelf, I end up with some wall mount bullshit that can store about I don't know two inches of shelf space. Mm. Yeah, you need bookcase. I need maybe. case. Yeah. But or I need lumber involved. I uh, randomly found uh, two big black bookcases on uh, Marketplace for free yesterday. Mm-hmm. And uh, the car broke down on the way to get them. Damn. So uh, they, they were like, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll hold them for you. I'm like, cool, thank you. I'm two minutes away from your house. Can you, like, bring them over here? Mm-hmm. No, I can't. Okay. Yeah. I can't get them in my car. All right. Yeah. Bye. And then they'll t- they'll they'll say like yeah I'll hold them for you no big deal and the the person who fails to stop to help you with your car trouble is holding the bookcases as they leave the neighborhood that you were trying to get into. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They just wave. <laughs> they think you're waving back to you to them, but it's the bookcases. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did see a guy. Yeah, um, God, I wish I could find this. I should uh, I should find it somewhere. Or it, it may make its rounds. Legit found a guy yesterday or day before with um, a deep freezer in the back of a Miata. Hmm. Like a deep freeze. Yeah. Proper. Yeah. I don't even know how he strapped it and it was facing toward the back. I mean, he, he in a heavy wind, the car would have taken taken to the sky. Mm-hmm. It, it was weird. It just reeked of like, you were kicked out of the house. You were, you were kicked out of the house an hour ago. And this is the thing that you indignantly grabbed and put on the back of your car, damaging both the freezer and the car with what I assume is a half side of deer in the back of the, you know, freezer that you just refused to give up. Probably freezer uh-huh. burn. But yeah, that was him driving by our, our lonesome, um, plain and relatively sad little airport. Mm. Oh, well. Not going to it, I guess. That won't check. That luggage won't check. <laughs> Yeah, but I know you're not really on Facebook proper, but Facebook Marketplace is usually a good, a pretty good place to find some weird uh, sh- shelves, some bookshelves, bookcases, whatever, what have you. Yeah. Uh, not only occasionally, I get sent links to it occasionally, to which I respond, yes, please, a lot. Mm-hmm. Someone will just see something for $30. You want that? It's worth 100 yes. And wh- where should I point my car? Yeah. I Yeah. I just got like an eighty dollar Green Green Ranger statue for fifteen bucks on yeah. Marketplace. I forget what yard decoration I went for last time. I, I couldn't get it. Mm-hmm. Sad. Oh, and then those people living. are gone now. The the twelve foot skeletons that are up for a quarter of the year are gone. Oh, I'm sad. Now I have to go save the money and continue mm-hmm. this tradition. Sure, absolutely. It's a sloped yard. It's gonna be a. It's gonna be hard. <laughs> you want to talk about news? Sure. All right. October's near. I'm starting to worry about these. <clears throat> oh, I know. I know. I, I laugh at the same reel every 
every year. Uh, the the guy in the uh, dressed in all black with a pumpkin mask mm-hmm. doing a dance around some fall leaves. Mm-hmm. It says, you know, uh, when I first feel a breeze in the middle of 100 degree weather and he's like, I don't know, dancing to some Halloween music or some shit. <laughs> that was three days ago here. Yeah. If, um, if anyone was paying attention. So it was a full it, moon and the next morning I felt that, that autumn breeze the first time. Uh, let's talk about the penguin. Mm-hmm. The, uh, they announced that instead of a Sunday night premiere for the penguin, they will be releasing its first episode on Thursday, September 19th at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Okay. But HBO so that's plans to, to get all the weekend, I guess. Or? HBO is going to re-air it several times over the weekend. Mm. It'll be available on Thursday, September 19th. And then each new episode of The Penguin will debut on Sundays at 9 p.m. With episode two airing Sunday, September 29th. My birthday. Nice. Uh, but and if you're an HBO subscriber, you have the opportunity to catch any of the debuts, air dates, and Max streamers can just open the app and watch it because that's how we do. Because <laughs> none of that rigmarole was designed for you. Yeah, it'll be out over the weekend. Watch it when you can. Yeah, I you know I grew up with several VCRs trying to tape everything all at once, and uh, no, well worn copies the, of I, TV mm, Guide. I will take the streaming. I will roll up the streaming and stick it in my dick hole. Yeah. It, I, you know, no, no, no version of me still wants cable. No, no, God, no. Having to catch something on TV. Screw the old people yelling at clouds on Facebook. I don't want that. And commercials <laughs> make me wrinkle. I, I don't want anything like that. No. I mean, I don't care about commercials. I'll take commercials. I don't care. I watch Tubi. I watch Pluto. I don't. I mm. I got spoiled at some point. I mean, it started a long time ago, but now it's it's gotten real. It's gotten real bad. Look, man, like I ain't spoiled, spoiled. All right, I'm not spoiled. I don't care about commercials. They bug me, but I mean, I can just like not watch them. I can get up, go pee. You know. I mean, I, I can't even just sort of have them in the background. Now, I mean, a lot of that has to do with how much of my consumption has earbuds involved, but because mm-hmm. that can't be helping. I really don't like that shit going directly into my ear. It, it does feel a little bit different if it's on a TV and I can just walk away. Mm, but I so rarely yeah. get to have the TV that like everyone's watching in my house. So like I have a pad and something connected. It just it goes right into the ear, right into the ear with me. Yeah, it doesn't. The bathroom understand. break doesn't help. I don't know. I understand. That's how uh, they get me. That's how they get that extra buck ninety nine out a month or whatever it is for ad free out of me. Yeah, we. I pretty much just have watch stuff in the living room. So I will just get up and be like, "Yay, I have to pee! Yay, I need another piece of pizza!" Yay! Mm. <laughs> it's time for flips, chocolate covered pretzels. <laughs> but what you don't have to do is the thing where you like run screaming with hot food in your hand, diving over the couch. Right now, here's here's kind of a fun thing, and that were it not for commercials, I wouldn't have known about that it exists. Uh, somehow, uh, my wife has an uncanny ability to pause the show to ask me a question about the show or something else the show made her think of. And then 20 minutes later, when we're done talking, she re- hits play again and it goes directly to commercial. It's like oh, yeah. she will pause it right before they go to a commercial break. Well, it's, I don't know how she does it. I've wondered if it's that. I mean, it could just be that. Yeah. It was, well, it could be, there could be some sense to that. Like she hits no, it right it at a suspenseful moment, which happens to be an ad, ad break. <laughs> yeah maybe but i but thought it's, you know we're watching married with children like, you know well, true. <laughs> like they weren't exactly <laughs> leaving you with who shot jr right before the uh ad break <laughs> right. on married with children but yeah they we i thought a couple of times i've paused it and just gone off to make some food or something come back and it's been like 10 minutes i'll come back hit play and it's it's been a commercial i thought sometimes it's just been you know what in whatever capacity you had this video on for a while. So now's your next ad break, asshole. Good. Mm-hmm. Congrats. Oh, thanks. Yeah, no, I don't think it's just a, I don't think pausing it is triggering anything for it. I just, <laughs> I wondered. Do you remember the early days, even of uh, this type of streaming ad where in CW was one of the yeah. worst offenders? It, like you could walk away for a second if you wanted to. And then you come back, but well, the ad, the ad was only 60 seconds. You came back. Okay. Well, I'm, you know, I'm a couple minutes into the scene. Let me just, let me just hit the reverse button a couple times. Oh wait, I'm watching the commercial again. Yep. You had to, 
literally watch it to pause it to be able to pause it on the show to go get your corn dog or whatever the fuck. Yeah. And then like yeah, now and and all these these wonderful times. I hit hit back a couple times and it gives me the pass, the hall pass on that commercial, thank Christ. Mhm. Yeah, I've We've been I've through been some very, dark days. Yeah, I've been very thankful that most of the streaming services that I deal with now seem to give you the pass on the on the commercial that you yeah. just watched. But I've also been aggravated because sometimes I actually do want to watch the commercial again. Like I'll be like, "Wait, what was that?" and try oh, to back it's gone. it up. But it's it, gone. Yeah, it's yeah. just it's gone. You'll see it like fifteen more times before your half hour is up. Yeah. But for that instant, it's as gone as those podcasts that pause for an ad break, <laughs> and because of the ads, they're not there that week. Uh huh. Which sucks for me because some, mentally sometimes I'll check out for thirty seconds. I mean, I'm, I might I might be like just in my head go, okay, I've been trying to focus, but let's just let the let the damn walls open for a few seconds mm-hmm. while this ad plays. And then I'll come back about a minute later in my head and it's, it's been playing the episode and I go back and realize it's one of the episodes that doesn't have the, cause the mm. whatever dynamic ads have already run on that one or whatever the fuck they're called. And, no, we, we run dynamic ads. <sighs> yeah. These are phrases. I don't understand well enough. They have, uh, clearly pre- or we'd have more money. Yeah. They have like, I think pre recorded, um, Maybe they have a version of dynamic ads that are for a specific, it's for a specific client. And once they lose that client, they have to take those off of the ads or so, off of the podcasts. Oh, maybe, maybe. I don't know. It's fancier than I reckon we need. But also there's a thing that happens with ours because of, we've had listeners tell us like, we'll have like, you know, we'll, like, oh, we'll be right back after these words. And then no words come because they just don't have enough advertisers, uh, on the service, you know, to cover it all. <laughs> There's a live TV part of that that makes me makes me happy. And we cut to so and so. Okay, so and so's out there. All right, and back to yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> <laughs> with that ad break about ad breaks, uh, Bruce Tim talking about Batman: Caped Crusader mm-hmm. gives a season two status update. Says we're still working on the scripts and starting to record. We've got a long way to go. So do I. I haven't even started that one. I intend to today, but I have not started that one. Oh man. I mean I'm behind. I'm I'm like four episodes in. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I I expected to be a little more couched and catch up on things and it just hadn't worked out. I I mm-hmm. thought there was time that was gonna be there and it and it, it wasn't. <laughs> uh Tim said, I'm assuming if the numbers are good, they'll probably want more. I like how he just sounds bored. But he does say we're only doing ten episodes yeah, he's of doing pop. This by a pool. He does say, yeah, we're only, only doing 10 episodes of Pop, so it's not like we're bored yet. Yeah. But like, it, I, what I mean is like, it just feels nice and funny in a way that he's just like, yes, yes, I assume if the numbers are good, they'll want more. But otherwise, I'll move on to the next project. I uh, think of it as like a Dylan-esque flippancy. Yeah, yeah, I reckon, I reckon if it sells all right, they'll ask me a couple more. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't care much. I'm going to read the Bible. <laughs> I I stupidly sat down and with my leg tucked under me and I'm 40 and that hurts. It does. You don't know until uh, after you... the numbing goes away how much it hurts. Uh, uh, I don't. I didn't let it go that far. Good for you. <clears throat> Joker folly do. Mm-hmm. A lot of people have been giving shit to Todd Phillips because in a Variety article he said it's it's not a musical. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I did think we were told exactly the opposite. So, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm I mean, here, I'm out look, here. Look, the thing has been viewed by people. The guy writing the, the, the variety article said it's a full on musical. He's seen the thing, but Todd Phillips says most of the music in the movie is really just dialogue. It's just Arthur not having the words to say what he wants to say. So he sings them instead. He says, uh, it, it says the Phillips quite hasn't landed on the proper way to categorize it yet. I just don't want <laughs> the word just, musical comes to mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Try to be open-minded here for Philip's sake, but he says, I just don't want people to think that it's like in the Heights where the lady in the bodega starts to sing and they take it out into the street and the police are dancing. He says, pointing out that most of the musical numbers exist in Arthur and Lee's warped imaginations. No disrespect because I loved in the Heights. 
We asked ourselves what would need to be true for two people to just break into song in the middle of a conversation. Where does the music come from when no one can hear it but the characters? Neither Arthur nor Lee are professional singers, and they shouldn't sound like they are. Phoenix agreed. Uh, it was important to me that we never perform the songs as one typically, typically does in a musical. We didn't want vibrato and perfect notes. Instead, the goal was to do something nerve-wracking but honest. The article goes on to explain, in many musicals, actors will sing along to a pre-recorded track. In this film, Phoenix and Gaga did everything live, accompanied by a piano player who performed off-camera, trying to keep up with whatever tempo they established. In the editing room, Phillips said that they tried to sync the, the radically different takes into a coherent whole, and he described that as a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> he says, particularly for Joaquin, so much of it is about feeling the moment as you do it. You can't decide that in a sound studio three weeks before you show up to shoot it. Uh, I'm interested to to see how this pans out. Like, oh, this it sounds like chaos. I love it. It doesn't really sound like a musical. No. I mean, I I get why he's saying that it it's not, because it is. It, he's definitely not trying to go down that traditional road. But there's still it's still a little bit of a trope, like you know, in a musical where there's always like one bit where it's one kind of side character and everything stops, and it's like the one spotlight song, mm -hmm. and you're like, Kut -tum! and then they do a little talkie singing. Yeah, so we're just gonna do a whole movie of that. I have to admit, when I saw that headline, that Todd Phillips says Joker Two isn't a musical, <laughs> it's just like it gave me the vibes, man. It gave me the the uh, Todd Phillips says Joker is not a comic book movie. Bull fucking shit. Stop. Stop. Yeah. But he's right. It's not. They took names. <laughs> they took names in a setting. It's fine. Whatever, man. You know, the guy wrote old school. Old school. I mean, what? God, you forget about these things as time goes by. <laughs> I'll give it to him. I will give it to him. I had to watch the shit out of that movie. It was great at the time. Yeah. I'll give him a million chances because he wrote old school. And due date was not too damn shabby. And uh, Joker was good. It, it was, was good. good. I'm sorry. It was. For I'm somebody who's never seen, you know, the most famous trilogy of his movies, I actually do like his movies now that you're calling them out. Yeah. I mean, The Hangover, that was fine. That was enjoyable. I just I never, never got, got around, around to it. It's like Bridesmaids. I, it's like the little, a little gap in the tens or whatever yeah. era that was where I was supposed to have seen some movies and I just never got them. I just never, they just never got downloaded. Sorry. Okay, to be fair, you and I were too busy smoking and playing Arkham games all night mm -hmm. and watching Batman cartoons. Mm -hmm. We didn't, and Futurama, and we didn't have time. Draining fields of cows worth of milk. <laughs> we were far too busy. <laughs> <laughs> For that or exercise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got enough exercise at work, dude. That's yeah, true. I actually was in really good shape at the time. I needed my the, God. I probably needed the calories to some extent. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I did watch the hangar. It was okay. It wasn't really like the premise wasn't really my kind of thing. Like it wasn't same way. I don't like action movies with like, uh, MacGuffins or whatever. Yeah. Like I don't, I'm not like big on the, Oh no, we blacked out party movie. I just, uh, that to me, it's not funny, but for what it was, hangover was pretty good. And I never watched the other two. I wouldn't know. I do hate, though, that even when you try to do it honestly, like you could go watch those movies now, give it the best, the most honest, open-minded take you could possibly want to, mm -hmm. and some if and enjoy it about 80, 85% as much as you might possibly have had you just watched it 10 years ago when everyone else was enjoying it. Yeah. And when those jokes were, you know, the most relevant they could be right then, because, you know, comedy changes. Mm-hmm. And... I hate that though. I hate, like you try to catch up. You want you want to do well, and you and you like it, but then you go and like somebody else is going to talk about nostalgically. Oh my god, I love that movie. No, it was okay. You're not shitting on it. You're just it was all you just missed the same boat. Yeah. To be fair though, at this at the like I watched Due Date pretty much when it came out because I was like, oh okay, this is this looks weird. <laughs> I I remember watching that close to when it came out. I think, but mm -hmm. pretty sure I stole that one. It really was sort of like a modern retelling of trains, planes, and automobiles. Yeah, it kind of was. But with RDJ. Yeah. Or what's that movie about eight heads in a duffel bag or something? Oh, I don't know that one. I forget. <laughs> I think it used to air on Comedy Central every other minute. <laughs> I don't know. I remember they For played, uh, they played uh, 
Like throw mama from the train or some shit a lot. <laughs> That no, that might be what I'm thinking of. The, that might not be what I'm thinking of. The incredibly sour faced woman that was just ubiquitous there in like the late eighties, early nineties. Yeah. Um anyway. <laughs> something about heads in a duffel bag was in my mix too. I don't know what memories these are slamming yeah. together anymore. Yeah, there there's like a collective of movies that I either I feel like in that era I came back to Comedy Central an hour later and it was doing a Gallagher special. <laughs> like Yeah, dude. Like Comedy Central would play stuff. That I, I just like, it's all a mix for me. It's like something with Danny DeVito, Billy Crystal's involved in there. There's an old lady and she's got a gun. Uh, you know, I don't know. Stay out long enough. You get some mystery science theater if you do it right. (laughs) Yeah. There's like a bunch of movies that I was just like, ugh, I just, I'm not going to watch that. Um, I, I made a mistake and watched one of them and it was like, freaking John Lovitz and Dana Carvey and they were robbing a place. And I'm like, Ugh, this is the worst. <laughs> yeah. This is just the worst. At the same time, you're like, God, oh, this is terrible. I'm going to go back to movie gallery and rent city slickers yeah. again. And I was a kid, you know, so I'm sitting there going like, Oh my God, you know, I've seen the SNL. I know Dana Carvey's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I've seen those same four episodes of SNL run on the same channel over and over again. Yeah. Naturally. All right. Uh, <laughs> in a recent interview with The Rap, Sean Gunn teased what we can uh, expect from his take on Maxwell Lord. I can't talk too much about it. I can say that my brother James and I did discuss what reference materials from the canon were relevant to my process. Uh, I, I can't say that much other than we did talk about how relevant materials we referenced no live performances of the character. It's all from written materials with things that we figure we're looking at. So, uh, no Pedro Pascal. And, um... No no dude from Supergirl, whatever his name was. Yeah. <laughs> I, d- I, I no chance remember I remember his show. name. He's there. <clears throat> I barely remember that he was even a part of the show, man. He was. Vanished with a flock card, if you will. But, like... He he he, he took off with uh, with Alex's heterosexuality. Yeah. The, the speed that someone could be written off that show was remarkable. Yeah, and he was just like, I don't want to go to Vancouver. And they were like, oh. No. Well, that's that then. And then, and then <laughs> Alex's heterosexuality said, I don't want to go to Vancouver either. <laughs> and they were like, well, she's cute anyway. We can make this work. Yeah. <laughs> this is an opportunity for inclusion. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. I mean. It was a weird. If she, was, if she was going to. It was. It was like, if she was going to be straight, it was going to be with that guy. That guy from that Jennifer Love Hewitt movie. I guess it played Max Lord. Is that I mean, which is fair because if I was going to be gay, I was gonna. It was going to be for that guy. Maybe that's your childhood talking though. I felt movement. I did kind um, of forget how <laughs> young his face was in my first memories. God, it's uh-huh. just a. It's 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 hard to it's a hard memory to describe. Yeah, because I think he was like I, I remember him being as young as like say a um, Mighty Duck even. <laughs> was he? He probably was in that era for me, as far as I'm wow. you know, my memory, but. I, I I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I don't even remember the guy's name. But I do like the idea that anyone that you can't remember from that time, you your brain superimposes him into the Mighty Ducks. I mean, yeah, it could be that easy, really. They're like, I want to see your brain's version of the Mighty Ducks, whereas like Maxwell Lord is running around and then all of a sudden Christian Bale shows up, but he's in the Newsies. Yeah. And <laughs> Jonathan Taylor Thomas comes in and he's got like an, uh, like a wolf with him. Yeah. And <laughs> it's just like all of the nineties and early aughts kind of crammed into one hockey movie. All just practicing with rollerblades and tennis balls. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And Mark Marin is there scaring the children. Yeah. You know about that, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> Apparently there was a, in Mighty Ducks 2, he was a, um, Oh gosh, he was like a bellhop or something. Oh, lovely! And they had to cut out a scene. He was talking to uh, Keenan Thompson about it because Te- Keenan Thompson obviously was in the Mighty Ducks as well. Oh. And uh, yeah, apparently they like came to Mark Marin and they were like, "Hey, you got to scale it back." Because he was like an <laughs> he was an angry bellhop, and they had to like come to him and be like, "Hey, man, you you got to scale it back." And he's like, "Wow, what, what do you mean? What am I doing?" And he's like, "You're scaring the children." <laughs> <laughs> 
that's an old enough movie. That might have just been <laughs> kind of toward the tail end of his problem era. <laughs> like, I don't. How much of that was just real to Mark at that moment? Yeah, that's that's just hilarious to me. There was a there was what I would call a troubled and angry era based on his description of events. Just his version of that was just like, <laughs> this guy's down in his luck, man. Yeah, he's angry. <laughs> That does feel like something he would do, uh, especially a young version, would just overthink that entirely and just have that bellhop have three divorces in his head. You know, just yeah, a, a deeply angry person who like has a memory of you know losing a science fair to a cheat who he works for now on a daily basis, third marriage kind of bullshit. And the, like the whole, it's two lines and just don't scare the kids, man. Mm-hmm. Two lines and don't scare the kids. Here's the outfit. <laughs> We're going to get you that sad card, you know. All righty. Well, they're we all they're about? all being coached by Dave Coulier, by the way. Oh God. <laughs> anyway, no, only date her if she's an eighteen-year-old singer. Yeah, yeah. Drifting into news and away from cobwebbed nineties nostalgia memories. Yeah. Um, <laughs> James Gunn uh, released a picture of the Argus logo, and I sent that to you in in Facebook Messenger here, but um. Yeah, a lot of people are arguing. They're like, "Oh no, that's Brother Eye. No, that's some like no, no, no. That's the Argus logo. That's what it is. Hmm. It's Argus. <laughs> kind of looks like a very, very, very fancy miniature golf course. If you say so, man. I don't know what the hell you you talking about. You can just see but, the hole right in the center there. Uh, yeah, a little bit. I can kind of see that. I'm just get so, it right um, between the arches, and you got yeah. this. To me, it looked like pain emanating from an asshole. But yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's, um, from its, its like side. A, it's just an image of an eye. Yeah, from the side. Yeah, it's an asshole with spidey sense. Yeah, it, this really is an image of an eye from the side. Though legit, I could just do a quick anatomy yeah. lesson with it. Here's yeah. an optic nerve. I mean, yeah, it literally is an eye. Argus comes from um, the Greek myth of Argus uh, Panoptes, um, and he was set by uh, Hera to be a watchman. And there were different versions of the myth. And some of them said like, you know, fucking hundred eyes, some of them thousand. Sometimes he was like immortalized into the feathers of fucking peacock or some shit. But there's a specific lost poem (laughs) that referred to him having four eyes, one that pointed in each direction. Mm -hmm. And of course, the Argus logo has the four points, the spotty senses I referred to it. And uh, those are directed at the singular eye representing each of the eyes. Uh, You know, by, by the way, now that I'm saying all this shit. Even though we don't have proof, there really is nothing stopping Gunn and company from combining Brother Eye and Omac into a thing with Argus. Especially since Maxwell Lord is so prevalent in the DCU. Yeah. Like in the comics, Lord hijacked uh, Brother Eye from Bruce Wayne and made an Omar, uh, Omac army or whatever. We don't have Bruce yet in the DCU, but what if Brother Eye is an invention of Argus this time and Lord hijacks it? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I'm just saying. It's a possibility. Um, he dropped a, ba- a picture of a bag of Chacos. Whatever could he mean? Do you know what that is? Chacos? Yeah. Is that not Manhunter's favorite snack? Absolutely it is. Yeah. It is the DC Universe brand of Oreos. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that. I mean, that. I only want to know where to get them. Of course. Of course. Because I can find. You know, sixteen shades of Beetlejuice right now. Just let me let me have some chacos when the time comes, guys. Get the marketing. Of on. course, I saw some uh, some of the cult posting a picture of Cavill's Superman with Oreos next to him and corn and sweat with chacos. Mm-hmm. Cause knock off, rip off. Blah, blah, blah. Like yeah, it's just so frustrating. <laughs> let it like, be. Let it be. Like, no, sweetie, we're excited about this because this is some comic book shit. And you don't know about that, but <laughs> last I saw that dude's in the MCU now. So <sighs> maybe somewhere. <laughs> All right. Somebody asked James Gunn, if you had the chance to cast any of the guardians of the galaxy stars in the DC universe, who would you cast them as? And Gunn says, well, that would be a spoiler, wouldn't it? God, I hope so. But yeah, <clears throat> I mean, I'm fine with it. Yes, that's fine. Oh. Yes. If that's real, if they're, you know, I, he's hinted enough that they'll show, some of these people will show up in the DCU. I'm fine with it. Yeah. I'm happy about it. Hell, you could take the actual Guardians and make them 
people in the DC. Like, give them another, you know, costume. That'd be fun. Yeah. You think I wouldn't take a, you know, put the you know Rocket Raccoon in like a Detective Chimp outfit? Yeah, oh, yeah. Cast him up. Yeah. Bradley Cooper. Yeah. <laughs> but I want you to CGI the monkey outfit on top yeah. of Rocket, and I'm and then I'm on board. Chris Boys Pratt, Bradley Booster Gold, <laughs> Zoe Saldana, Zatanna. Oh, beautiful. Why not? Just beautiful. Why not? I, I or she could be Vixen. I actually don't, I don't know care. what to do with Mantis. That is a hard... Uh, uh, although oh, several um, alien races I could easily do. Well, but she could be Zatanna. I don't care. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she also doesn't have to be an alien. No, she I mean, could just be a lady. <laughs> well, sure. I was just saying if we're doing her in costume here, it's going to be hard to do Mantis proper. Oh, you just want the characters. Want the characters playing. then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. All right. Well, I don't know. I, don't, I can't help you with that. Drax, easy. But, Put him in a car. Hell, he's halfway Solomon Grundy as we speak. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It would have been. It would have been fun, and I know people would have been pissed, but it would have been fun if he got to play Lex Luthor, just like the biggest, like bulkiest, muscle-bound Lex Luthor. It, like, well, it's a Frank Miller one, in, in, in a way. Yeah, a little bit. Like late stage Frank Miller, at least. Yeah. 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 Just get an absolute ham of a of a human being. And dumb him up too. Give him, give him a, give him a script with like, you know, maximum of five words of sentence in it. Ooh, ooh. You know who would have been great as like an old Lex Luthor? Great, terrible, or great actually great. Uh, it would have been scoffed at, but so everyone right would have been. Between the, gotcha. It would have been scoffed at, but everyone would have been deadly wrong. Mm-hmm. Ed O'Neill. Yeah, you're right. I want to scoff at that, and then I'd probably dig it. Yeah, your reactions on Just, point. Yeah. Have you seen? Um, have you seen that basketball movie he's in? Hmm. I haven't seen a basketball movie in decades, probably. Um, no, no, no. I watched I think Space Jam Legacy when it came out. That's probably the last time. I think it's called like Clipping or Clipped or something. It's on like Hulu. Yeah, it's a miniseries. It's a miniseries. It goes behind the scenes of a notorious NBA owner's racist remarks that were captured on tape and heard around the world. And he's playing He's playing the guy. He's playing like the, the, the owner. Oh. The Clippers, I guess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. If you said He's the guy's name, I think I remember that. Donald instance. Sterling. There you go. Donald Sterling, yeah. Uh, and it is it is not a comedy. It is a drama. And every, people forget Ed O'Neill was not just Al Bundy. He was not just Jay from Modern Family. Dude played, you know, in uh, Dragnet, and he was on uh, The Big Apple and all these, like, dramas and shit. He comes from drama initially. And he's he's really fantastic. He's amazing, and the, like the trailer for this miniseries just looks so dark, and he's so sinister. <laughs> oh yeah, I have a I have every confidence that you're right, and every confidence that he's amazing, and I believe everything yeah. you just said. And yet, I, it's still, he's he's Bundy, and he's Jay to me. I just I have no experience with the rest of that, but yeah, he would kill. I'm sure. Yeah. He did I'm certain. Yeah, I would I would love to see him. As an older Lex Luthor, just like maybe he's got a son, maybe he's got a junior hanging around that'll become like the actual arch nemesis or something. Mm-hmm. But I kind of want like the the Lex Senior Lionel Luthor type of character with 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 Ed O'Neill. I anyway, get um, <laughs> he's gonna go get a tie out of the office that's in his uh, or the closet that's in his like giant skyscraper office, and the closet design is gonna be cribbed from Modern Family, like a closet yeah. closet closet's design. Maybe has a little logo you can zoom in and see. Yeah, and you can totally see him as like playing the guy who's like already pissed about the billionaire who's already pissed about illegal immigration. Oh yeah, easy. <laughs> and then he's the one that points out that Superman is illegal yeah. immigrant. <laughs> <coughs> All right. Um, let's see. James Gunn talking about visual effects partners not having to worry about crunching to the finish line. He says if you do some research. You'll see my films have always taken a different approach and I've always given my VFX artists collaborators time to do their jobs properly and the respect they deserve. And the quality of the VFX in those films is uniformly great because of it. And because my friends at Weta and Framestore and ILM and more are amazingly talented. This is why we wrapped on Superman a year before release and why they've been hard at work on many shots for months before that. This is why we start heartily editing uh, editing during the shoot. It's why I prepare so vigorously and why we only shoot finished screenplays. And Supergirl, which I am not directing, is being handled the same way. I cannot praise the VFX artists that help us create magic enough. 
That that all sounds exactly like what I want to hear. Not it. Because these things aren't DC. These things aren't Marvel. It's like across the board, there have been too many, too many uh, movies in production that needed all this VFX work, and nobody's giving these guys time. They're changing things mm-hmm. quickly, shooting the whole damn thing on mm-hmm. a green screen. Shit can't can't uh, be sustained. Yeah. Uh, Is- Isabella Merced was in a recent interview with Deadline said uh, about her hot girl costume and helmet, which has gotten a lot of flack online along with the other uh, costumes that have leaked that have the, uh, <laughs> the um, Maxwell Lord, the Lord tech logo on it. She says, well, there have been some leaked pictures online. I think James knows what he wants. And this specific suit is for this specific timeline in the story. I don't know what else I got to say. Uh, or I can say, but I got to say the helmet was my absolute favorite. It was sick. It's so badass. It's perfect. But that's a confirmation to me that it's not going to be the final costume for her. These are heroes who are employed by Maxwell mm-hmm. Lord, which has been a thing in the comics before. True. You think they're not going to have multiple costumes for action figures? <laughs> Come on, y'all. Uh, Zoe Kravitz was talking to Collider. <clears throat> ahead of her blink twice. She said she previewed the Batman part two and said the origin story for Catwoman is now complete. Now her character is free to be the chaos agent in Gotham and to cross paths with Robert Pattinson's uh, caped crusader again, expect a more authoritative take on Miss Kyle next time as she takes that motorcycle for a spin. It says here. And uh, she says the whole concept of Selena in that film was it's an origin story. So obviously there's a lot more to explore. It was a woman coming into her power and wanting to explore what it feels like when she can be playful and sit into that power. Hopefully it will be very fun one day. <laughs> nice. The way she said it, hopefully it will be very fun one, one day. day. Yeah. It hasn't been fun so far. <laughs> it's just been an arduous journey. It's just been a journey uphill. I swear to Christ. I just, we've just been trying to get her to this place where she could be fun. Yeah. Yeah. You're kind of describing a lot of people's conversations about their children. Yeah. I love them. I love them so I much. Just, <laughs> it's so much fucking work. I want to die every day. God, I'd do anything for these children. That just sounds like something coming from your own soul, yeah, man. Some days. <laughs> All right. So uh, the Watchmen Chapter One director hopes to adapt Doomsday Clock and other Watchmen spinoffs. He says, uh, talking to comicbook.com, says, I'm game for it. I'm a big DC fan, so yeah, I'd be game for doing something like that. It would be great because we've already built so many of the designs. We've built this world, and Dave Gibbons' art was such an inspiration for us in building this world. It's always sad for us as the artists who have done all this work to build this amazing world, especially something that Dave Gibbons designed, and then just walk away from it. Never go back. So yeah, a lot of us, I, I think Doomsday, Doomsday Clock was on our mind. There's been some other spinoffs from Watchmen. We would love to, if Warner Brothers is game for it, then I think anybody on the art team would sign up immediately because we had a blast translating this book. Mm-hmm. I'd watch them eventually. Mm-hmm. Not immediately. Mm-hmm. As it's been clear, we never, you and I never watch these things right no. when they come out. We're like, what? No. Ah, shit. That came out yeah. yesterday? Yeah. Uh, well... I'll try to remember it, but chances are I'm going to be watching something from 30 years ago when I'm eating too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're over here like rewatching Futurama. It, well, yeah, sometimes. But it it's usually just that if I have found, I have to know what's happening to, to make the time to put, to put it into place. So like when something, mm-hmm. if I know about it and I've made time, that's great. If I haven't, then like I, I, I just end up doing the thing and then I get there and it says, oh, this, this thing released. And I go, oh, that sounds great. I'll see you tomorrow. I got to do this thing right now. And uh, uh-huh. it just so rarely usurps the, the the plan that was there. Yeah. I'm perpetually yeah. behind. So I'm like, okay, but I mean, the wife wants to watch then the rest of the boys and. There's a sentence I'll never say in this household. Oh, <laughs> I'm usually the one that's like, eh, sure, we're about to yeah. eat. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, I have to sleep in a few hours. Are we sure you want to watch the boys? I'm fine with sleeping after it. I just don't want to eat while I'm watching heads and titties yeah. explode and rectums and whatever, whatever. else is going to happen in that episode. Yeah. Uh, she walked through, uh, I forget 
I mean, I know which scenes it were it was, but I forget how long ago. It was a few weeks ago. But yeah, she walked through and just saw like moments of the boys and looked at me and was like, I, it's normally this bad, but not exactly this type of... I, yeah, I don't know. I don't have an explanation. It just is... It, like you picked you picked a bad time, but like it wasn't gonna be better, just different if you'd walked in if you, like five minutes ago. <laughs> it was gonna be like a different kind of bad. One that you could have palated better. Yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> It was a weird apology. So Batman Arkham Shadow revealed the first gameplay trailer. It's a VR mm-hmm. game. Set in what appears to be the Arkham universe, the Arkham Asylum universe. If it's not the gameplay's directly related yeah well it's the same uh same guy voicing batman from uh arkham origins roger craig smith and he's joined by troy baker as harvey dent tara strong as harleen quinzel uh kari payton as rat catcher you know it's fine cast fine cast and um to me that the graphics didn't look great they look different and i don't know i think commercials for vr just don't show it the same way it yeah but also it, that's like, going to look a I lot better like with the, the headset on. Yeah, it might, but I don't like the, uh, the first person perspective either. Like I like to be able to see the character that I'm playing running around on the I screen. Know. I mean, I, I think to some extent it's just VR ain't for you. Yeah, no, it's I not. Would, also, I every time know. I do VR, I, every time I've tried it, like it fogs up on the inside. And I can't see oh, anything because I'm a big fat guy that yeah. sweats. You know? <laughs> That'll do it. I mean, I've, <laughs> I really haven't tried it. I have no idea if it's for me or not. I've just never at any point stop to actually give it a shot. I'm serious. Sure, sure as hell not buying it. Um, I ain't got it like that. So no chance. I'm like going to play this game anytime soon, but it looked fucking great. As far as the gameplay. Hell yeah. yeah. Okay. I, um, you know, I would really love the chance but, to like, well, I mean, I think the first person would mess with me a little bit too, as far as, uh, getting used to it. There'd be a learning curve here for me going into VR games without a shadow of a doubt. More like <laughs> beyond a shadow yeah. of an arc. <laughs> Oh, you. <laughs> oh, me. This glitch would be way more boring if I got stuck. Because I think it was, uh, I want to say it was Arkham Origins that I got stuck in. Um, the system has long since uh, died or at a pawn shop or something. I, don't, I have no idea where it went. But um, it, I got stuck falling in, in one level in uh, Origins. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I forget exactly. I was going down an elevator and I, I actually got through the floor of the elevator. And then I, so... When you look up, you can see the bottom of the map turn into wires, and then and then the wires get yeah, smaller the mesh. and smaller and smaller, and you just fall for eternity. That that was the game I had saved because it saved right as I was going mm-hmm. through the floor. I could never get out of that. So about halfway through Arkham Origin, I just sort of lost track. I mean, I, it was my second play. I'd played it once before, but I never went back for it after that. But I would hate to see that fall in this perspective. It's even more boring. You can only yeah. you can only do so many like swoop glides and eternity before you get bored and turn it off. I mean, yeah, I had a hard enough time with that in the actual mm-hmm. game. Like, All right, well, I'm just kind of jumping and mm-hmm. gliding because I don't have it in me to actually play through the narrative. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I just want to run around as Batman. That was one of the things. Uh, <clears throat> um, when I lived with Matt, uh, his girlfriend at the time got so annoyed with us. And specifically me, because I would like just hang out in the living room and play Star Trek mm-hmm. Legacy on Xbox uh, 360. But I didn't want to play the game, so there was no narrative. Like I would basically just like open a skirmish level with a bunch of different ships, and I wouldn't fight them. I would just fly around <laughs> and watch them fight oh. each other. <laughs> you just made your own episode, <laughs> or whatever. It- or whatever they were doing, and I would just, I just wanted to watch. I just wanted to like look at the ship from different angles. <laughs> I didn't want to play it for real. She was like, "This is so boring." It's everything mm-hmm. I could have dreamed of. <laughs> it was. I mean, our style, even playing the Arkham games, was um, largely I would just get us through the level, and then, it, yeah, I mean that was about it. You would basically just sort of like fly around the city and fight some random thugs, and then when it, like when we actually needed to like advance the game, we'd just like toss me the controller, to, like beat up somebody real quick. And then we'd go back and watch mm-hmm. the states. <laughs> that method worked really well until that damn Star Trek game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All righty. Um, so here's here's something kind of fun. I saw it made a bunch of people mad, but, uh, you know, as we all know, two years ago, WB canceled the already wrapped Batgirl uh-huh. movie. 
which featured Michael Keaton as Batman. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and they took a write-off, a tax write-off on the $90 million movie. GQ recently asked Michael Keaton if he was disappointed about the cancellation. Keaton said, <laughs> no, I didn't care one way or another. Big, fun, nice check. And he like rubbed his fingers together. <laughs> <laughs> now, to be fair. Why would I be sad? My money <laughs> went through just fine. Yeah. To be fair, GQ did say he softened. And he said of the directors, I like those boys. They're nice guys. I pull for them. I want them to succeed. And I think they felt very badly. And that made me feel bad. Me? I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, oh. pretty much I'm in no way affected by this in any capacity because uh, this is not my first rodeo but sorry everyone else was sad about it yeah oh uh, so we got a little bit of feedback uh, we got a Joel Stenhouse here wrote to us says what are you guys thinking over there very little sometimes loudly he says hey to whom it may concern my name is Joel and I would just like to say what the hell, or what the heel, H-E apostrophe L-L, are you guys doing over there? Have you lost your minds? Why would you drop the Black Adam sequel? Also, how can there not literally anything else you make the new DC movie about or any other direction you could have gone? But no, you idiots go and decide to make another bloody stupid Superman movie. Honestly, how many damn Superman movies does there need to be? It's bloody ridiculous. You clowns are getting ridiculous. Like, seriously, how about expanding the other characters a little more? It's just getting out of control was already bad enough that there is like 10 different bloody spider Spider-Man movies in the last 10 years. All with different actors playing Spider-Man. None of it even makes any sense anymore. There is literally no connection between half the crepe you guys put on screens. Time to pull heads out of arses and get some new ideas going. It's just getting very confusingly sad these days. Please do something about it, but not in other Spider-Man movies. P.S. Also, whoever directed and wrote the script for the Shazam movies should find a new career. The dumbest movie so far. The storyline was half good, but giving the powers to a, co- to a kid who is literally dumber than my boot, who then gives the other powers to more kids who none of had a clue what they were doing. They were two movies you could barely make it through without wanting to turn it off every 10 minutes. Get it together. Seriously. Oh, that um, was something. I, I I believe you have us confused mm-hmm. with the people who make no, DC no, movies. No, no, We'll pass it on. <laughs> Just know you've left it in good hands. <laughs> Rest well tonight, Prince. Really, man? <laughs> Um, (laughs) all right. So we also, we also had uh, a question from a listener Mm -hmm. named Adam who wanted to know our thoughts on, uh, the absolute line of the comics and I uh, held it off for, for last specifically because it was kind of feedback, but also it was just kind of like, this isn't on screen. Mm -hmm. And it was funny because over on thread, someone, uh, posted a picture of the uh, the Batman logo from the Absolute line, and this gotten a lot of flack online. And they posted it and said, "James Gunn, please make them change it." And Gunn said, "I have no jurisdiction over the comics. <laughs> this has nothing to do with me." But there's been so much confusion. The one time I've they needed to talk thought, to Snyder, and they didn't find the right one. Yeah, um, it's just funny because it's like y'all, so many people. I think this is the, oh, this is the, they released the Batman symbol from James Gunn's Batman Brave and the Bold. No, that's not what's happened at all. It is a comic book line. It's a separate universe from the main comic book series that they're starting a new universe called the Absolute Universe. It's going to run alongside the main continuity comics instead of replacing it like New 52. Uh, Scott Snyder. The. Acclaimed writer. Capital um, T. The. Some of the best. Some of the best Justice League comics, some of the best Batman comics, uh, Nightwing comics, some of the best comics, he, period. He was seemingly incapable of fault if it had a DC logo on it. This man uh, is a God-tier yeah. writer, is spearheading 
this completely new take on the DC James Gunning it, if you will. There's they're stripping these characters of so much of what these characters are and creating a new thing that they're touting as a great jumping on point for people. This is like a Batman who doesn't have a mansion. He doesn't have an Alfred. He's not a rich guy. There's a Superman who, you know, doesn't have Fortress of Solitude and, you know, Wonder Woman doesn't have Paradise Island, all this shit, you know, like it's, they're stripping them of creature comforts and, and support systems and kind of burrowing down and getting to what the characters are about on like a very base level. They're not <clears throat> replacing anybody. They're not going, well, this is what this is. This is what DC is now. No, it's, it's, it's not. It's not. It'll have its own continuity. So and invariably it'll be given a universe when there's a crossover of some kind. But for now, it's playing yeah, in its own sandbox. I'm... Um, down is Scott Snyder. I'm at least interested. Um, and I go on this rant. I feel like every episode, but you know, y'all, these are like 90 year old characters almost. And the people who are like, that's not Batman. No, it's not my Batman. No, your Batman is something that uh, pissed off older yeah. people. They're like, that's not Batman. You know how I know, uh, I've talked to a lot of old people who go, I don't accept Batman. That's not Batman. Adam West is yeah. Batman. They say that about, you know, anything that's not, that's after Adam West. It really is the opposite of that nonsense and I, phrase, though. You know how if a character, in the real-life cycle of a character, it when it first exists, it's controversial, and then it becomes mm-hmm. a mainstay and a household name, and then it becomes blasé in its life, and it's like, you know, end cycle kind of, how, who could ever believe it was controversial to begin with kind of thing? Like, these mm-hmm. characters have been around so long that that entire life cycle, there have been whole generations who were part of it, and they died. The humans. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, good God. There are corpses in the ground who's who who once yeah. shook a fist we have at them changing a Batman. The ability to keep these characters <laughs> private has gone to the Supreme Court in several variations uh-huh. as a result of the real life versions of how long this shit takes. Yeah, I I am pretty unflustered by the the hateful laughing emojis and the 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 just the the rage over anything like. People don't even know why they're mad. They're just like, that's not real. None of the shit's real. They change it Which every is a good few years. Point. So there's a there's a good chance though that like with some versions of characters over the next say a couple decades losing their privatization. And mm-hmm. then between that and let's say I a you know, AI even kind of kicks it up and becomes even more casual as something you can do. Um to even with, you know, IPs. Like, mm-hmm. I don't see you having this conversation with anybody in like ten years. Because I think the waters will be too muddy. No one will be able to focus that kind of, you know, well, albeit impotent kind of attack right now. But I don't think anyone will, it'll yeah. be too clouded. That'd be a good thing in the case that I'm talking yeah. about it right now, though. You know, I, I I may completely sully any reputation that I might possibly have one day as a creator. Don't worry. It's long gone for us. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, if, you know, if I ever did create something, what would be really cool? You know, yeah. AI has... Okay, uh, a there's a possibility, there's a potential for AI to help creators be more productive. And like my thought is, you know, let's say, you know, I've I am an artist. I do a bunch of artwork, and I do real artwork. I don't. It's not AI, but yeah. if you could like hone some kind of AI and train it specifically on your artwork. And if it gets good enough, and it will, it will. Mm-hmm. It can learn a style. Um, completely learn your style. So you could eventually be like drawing one comic while having the AI create artwork for a different comic you're right. You're, 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 you're quote unquote drawing. Yeah. It's all in your style. If you're not it's all trained. Be a purist about it, then it can just be a, yeah. a tool in a lot of capacities. Like, but I, I mean, want it to look this way, you know? <laughs> What's the major difference between, you know, so you're a digital um, artist for the most part now. So yeah, I've, you know, I've made the switch mostly. I mean, except for all the doodles I do in notebooks. Yeah. Except for the big pen stuff. But the, um, you know, that curve tool, for instance, um, it's a cheat. It's a cheat, you know, and, and in, a, in a real capacity, like it, you know, you're not doing a certain thing. It, you're yeah. using that tool. It's, it's a form of intelligence. It's mm-hmm. a very, 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 very rudimentary version of certain things. If you use it as a tool to get certain things done in a certain way. And then what you just described is what I've heard called Warholian. What is, like, oh, yeah, okay. 
like Andy Warhol yeah, didn't yeah. do most of the art that's been given his name. He basically assigned people to do it under his branding. Mm-hmm. Um, either to reprint it, uh, you know, I think it, you know, quality and standard that he expected it to be. But yeah, and that wasn't a cheat. He that was his goal, by the way. That was his entire intention. Yeah. Um, nothing ignoble about it for him in the slightest. Yeah. But yeah, if you're not going to be a purist about it, there's a lot of ways that are, there's a lot of middle grounds where you could use it to do things. Hell, I use it to write, you know, stuff at work all the time, not stuff that's going to be too nuanced or substantial or anything. I'd have to be dishonest about in any capacity. Yeah. But to do brute task stuff, like say a marketing email that I could do, but I would rather not spend that 20 minutes doing it when it can do it in five seconds. Mm -hmm. Rudimentary tasks that I could just reproduce easily. Uh, There's, yeah, that's an easy low hanging fruit, but still. Yeah. And look, you know, to yeah. me, I'm not, I'm not an, I'm not an AI. What will we call the Luddites when it's I'm not, not a crypto guy. I'm not an NFT dude, bro. I'm not like an AI, like AI art is art. I, I don't think it is. But at the same time, if AI can mimic my art and get me close enough, you know, I've thought too many times in my life, man, if I could just clone myself mm-hmm. and there'd be two guys sitting on the couch watching TV. No, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, have company. Someone else could get up and get the food every once in a while. No, um, <laughs> you would. You would redo this. It was one of the new era Futurama episodes where it's just Bender can reproduce himself, so he cuts every task in half, and eventually there's just billions because of the multiplication. Because every version of Bender is so lazy that it creates more Benders yeah, to do more of tasks, yeah. more subsets. Yeah, of course, you know, <sighs> they become gray goo eventually and almost destroy the world. <laughs> but no, like there are, there are a lot of things like I really don't think I'm lazy. I think I'm I'm overwhelmed by all the things I want to get done and then I shut down and don't know what to do. Now, if I could clone myself and the clones did not have ADHD, it'd be yeah. fucking great. <laughs> that would yeah. be like or cared about more real-world practical concerns more often. <laughs> then we'd be in business. Yeah. There, there are lots of... If I could just retrain my laziness to do the things I should do instead of spending three hours practicing a card trick for no good reason. <laughs> to show no one. To show no one. <laughs> to show no one. <clears throat> just for the sheer knowledge that I can do that, and that's neat. Yeah. Yes, that could have been a number of tasks, all of which would have enhanced my life in any number of ways, but no, but no. Oh, God. <clears throat> well... That's all I've got for this episode of DC on screen. And with that sad dismount, I have not dismounted. Feels like we're going to, um, yeah, borderline feels like we're going to like thread a noose on the way out of this episode, but I think we'll be okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll be fine. Maybe we'll manage it. Anyway. Maybe yeah, I'm going to, uh, try to edit this episode and, uh, get it ready for publication. And then I'm going to mess around the house and try to clean up. So there you go. Keeps a DC yeah. on your screen. <laughs>